Nick Ferrari at Breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Eight minutes before eight, a little bit behind the clock after that tribute to Dame Deborah, of course, who's died after all that campaigning. Right, let's come from the Met to Madrid and to the NATO summit that's taking place, where Boris Johnson will today tell fellow NATO leaders to up their defence spending. This, though, as it is reported, that we should be spending more back here in the UK. Conservative MP and Defence Secretary Ben Wallace is also at the NATO summit, obviously, in Madrid and joins me now. What is the level of expenditure, then, that you think is required, Secretary of State? Good morning. Good morning. Well, I, I've always said that as the threat increases, so should our uh, spending to meet it, because our duty is to keep our people safe and our country and our allies. Um, the 2% of GDP was a target set in 2014 at Cardiff, and Britain has led the way in that. And we are still on track to be above 2% of GDP uh, right up until the end of the spending period for me, which is 2024. So, um, you know, we are within our ambitions, we're, we're leading, we, there's still many countries below 2%. But since Ukraine, since Russia has obviously become far more dangerous to us in the West, uh, and is, in, is definitely more dangerous in our, my whole lifetime. And I was, you know, a soldier in, in Germany in, in the times of the end of the Cold War. So, you know, that, that come the middle of the decade and, and the end of the decade, the threat is likely to be greater or certainly where we are now. And I think that's when we need to take a look at investing greater than 2% of GDP. But for now, between now and 2024, we're in the right place because this Prime Minister did do something that previous Prime Ministers had not done. He'd actually stopped taking a peace dividend out of defence, which had seemed to go on for 30 years, and had actually started to invest. And the £24 billion was a record investment in defence. It was the greatest since the Cold War. But I am, you know, as Defence Secretary, it's important for me to say, you know, I get to see the threats. Uh, I've seen them for decades or years, or decades, six years plus as a security minister, and I would not be doing my job if, if I didn't say the threat is changing and come 2024, we should look at increasing our spending on defence to keep you all safe. Uh, of course, we have to say, I understand the defence, the spending will come in at about 2.29 or 2.3 per cent. But if you allow, of course, for inflation, that will be a cut in real terms, won't it, Secretary of State? Well, at the moment, uh, I don't think this year, I think that, that the worry is to obviously towards the end of the spending period, say 24, um, because the way we, we, we get our spending over a four year block and, and in some years, like the first year, we've got a huge increase in percentage terms. And yes, at the moment, it is forecast to be less in the last year, but overall it averages out. But of course, inflation is something that's new. You know, when I had my settlement, inflation was based at roughly, I think, 1.5%. Obviously, it's up to 10%, <clears throat> but right across the board, and I'm, you know, I'm no different from anyone else. I'm a conservative uh, uh, sector of state. I do believe that we have to deal with the monster of inflation. So we have to be very careful that we don't all run away with, uh, you know, salary spiral, you know, inflation spirals that ultimately end up making us all worse off. But I also would say within government, I'm making the case that my department's needs, such as the threat has changed. There is a reality check. You'll have seen some people briefing there was a need for a reality check in inflation. I totally agree with that. There's also a reality check that Russia is very dangerous now, more dangerous than it's probably ever been uh, in our lifetime. And therefore, there is a reality check required come you know, post-2024. And I think that's why it's really important that we uh, uh, think about what happens next. One newspaper today, the Daily Telegraph, reports that Downing Street intervened with your speech yesterday and asked you to tone down or water down calls for higher defence expenditure. Is that report correct? N not really. Um, so, what does not really mean, Secretary well, of State? Because it is the case that Downing Street asked for some words to be taken out, but it's not because of asking for more money. The, the words that were taken out were basically words that the Prime Minister is going to say today in NATO... And, and number 10 wanted him to say it. I was going to sort of say the prime minister will say tomorrow. And they basically said, look, uh, I think it's quite right that he says it. And then we can obviously reflect on that later. That, so it was more of a presentational thing. It's nothing to do with. Sorry to disappoint. There was no, no. Sort of, uh, that, that, and that is that is not, of course, rare that obviously the prime minister is allowed to make the major announcement. Uh, other the secretaries of state. requires us all yeah. to submit our speeches in advance if they're major speeches. Uh, and we've all seen what's happened when people... Yes. Breach. It's your case. Indeed. Are we at our 1937 moment, Secretary of State? I certainly think we're at a, at a moment uh, when, you know, we the world is more dangerous and more anxious, and we need to start that process of having discussion about 
how important defence is in all our lives. You know, it, it's it's really interesting. As long as I've been in politics, you you hear people say no votes in defence. The public are only interested in you know help the NHS and education and other thing and defence is right down at the bottom. Didn't used to be that way. I mean, during the, the Cold War, defence was sort of number two or three. Uh, I think I'd always say, look, it doesn't really matter in, in one sense what voters uh, rank. What matters is the job of defending this country because sure enough, if you don't have the forces to defend yourself, suddenly it will become a top priority of the public. And um, you know, we saw that in pandemic and COVID that uh, things we thought would never happen did happen. And weren't we all grateful the armed forces were there to help uh, in that fight? And I think that's the really important thing is, you know, it, you know, it's gone on for decades that people suddenly forget the importance of defence. The Prime Minister didn't. He changed the habit that went on for about 30 years of chancellors taking a peace dividend out of defence year and year, even after 30 years after the Cold War, people were taking money out. He changed that. He gave me a record settlement. He started to invest again in defence. And I'm just keen that carries on through the rest of the decade. Can I take you to the Ukraine and the, the war that's going on there? Who's winning? Well, I think I would still say that the Ukrainians are winning. They are extracting huge amounts of cost uh, from the Russian armed forces. You know, over 25,000 Russians, we think, have been killed uh, in that fight in the space of, what, 112, 115 days. Uh, Russia has failed on all its major objectives. You know, it was going to take Kiev, it was going to take Odessa, it was going to take all those cities, Sumy. Uh, uh, and etc. So it failed on all its objectives. It is now reduced to a grinding advance of, I don't know, a few hundred meters every few days at massive costs in one small part of uh, eastern Ukraine, uh, really along two or three accesses. That is not a victory in anyone's book. If, if it had happened the other way around, in this, I'd have been fired by now. The government would have been overthrown in Britain uh, and there would have been thousands of very angry parents and, and girlfriends who've lost their husbands. So, you know, he, he's effectively and at the same time reduced Russia in the eyes of the world. I mean, it's a lesser country. I mean, the good news about NATO, never mind the sort of stuff in our media about my views of funding, the good news about NATO, Sweden and Finland, the Turkish have agreed to, to support their entry. Sweden and Finland are now joining NATO. That's, you know, on our northern flank, there are good old allies, you know, Sweden and Finland go back many, many years. Uh, that puts Britain again at the heart of the North Atlantic. Uh, we already run a group of 10 nations called the JEF. We run together as a, as a defensive group. Uh, and I think uh, that's really good news. And that's what Putin was warned. If you do this, you will get more NATO and more spending. That's and of course, exactly F F Finland boasts, I understand, a, a considerable force, which is great news. Meanwhile, in the UK, we could be going down to our lowest level of military since the Battle of Waterloo. Will you fight against that, Mr Wallace? Well, we're currently at 79,000 or 82,000 uh, troops, 79,000 trained troops and 82,000. What I'll always fight for is to make sure that our troops are properly equipped properly led uh, and properly deployed where they are not finding themselves overstretched. I think that's the most important thing. So you can cut the numbers. Ukraine is you can have lots of numbers, Nick. You can have parade ground numbers of tanks, but if they're not properly protected, they're not properly you know, connected to the artillery and everything, uh, then they're just effectively hulks on the road, as we saw in Kiev. So uh, I will always fight... Uh, and I'll also fight the government. I'll fight my governments who want to deploy troops and overstretch them without paying for them. Uh, and, you know, this prime minister has started to pay for them. That's good news. But, you know, it, it is almost important that we make sure we match our appetite to our stomach. Finally, the prime minister has said that the Ukraine invasion is a perfect example of toxic masculinity. Uh, it's crazy and it's macho. If Putin were a woman, he, she, would not have invaded Ukraine. Is the prime minister right? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to enter into uh, that. <laughs> well, I, I, I certainly think uh, uh, President Putin's view of himself and the world is a is a small man syndrome macho view. I think. Well, it's he's... unlikely a female leader of Russia would have gone topless on a horse drive, uh, riding through a lake, is it? In real, yeah. real yeah, well, I think, I think that's definitely right. I also think I also think um, you rarely hear the phrase "small woman syndrome." You always hear "small man syndrome," and I think uh, I think he's certainly got it uh, in spades. And I, I think that the real challenge here is the Russian system's view that somehow some states are lesser than others, their rights don't count. And 
if they want to uh, paint themselves into a new history, they seem to think their way to do that is through violence and invasion. And I think that's something worry about. I mean, to be fair, there is that lady, the spokeswoman in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She's like a comedy uh, turn. She does her statement every week, threatening to nuke everyone or do something or other. She's, you know, she, she's definitely a woman. Um, but uh, I, let's, I, I, let's not go down that road. I've had I, enough fun with other politicians on that. He's as lunatic as he is. So, uh, you know, I'll leave it to that. Grateful for your time as ever. Success. I wish you good success with you and your colleagues over there in Madrid. Ben Wallace, Defence Secretary, appearing here on LBC. Two minutes after eight news is next. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom, as the Prime Minister is set to urge NATO members to invest more to modernise defences in Europe, the Defence Secretary has reiterated his call for increased defence spending in the UK.